Welcome to How to Make the Functional Web Shooter by HeroTech. The first part is making the main web shooter unit, and for that, uh, we'll just take away all the components that we don't need. Okay, main web shooter unit. Parts needed are all the ones you see in front of you, and yeah, let's get started. So the first step you want to do is obviously take away any imperfections or extra parts from the 3D printing process. Should be pretty good. Okay, so we can start with uh, completing the web shooter bottom. What you do is take your piece of nylon line and thread it through. So you can see we've threaded the nylon line through the lock block. What we're going to want to do is get the small spring and put both ends of the nylon line through the small spring and pull it through. And what you should have is this complete assembly of the lock block, nylon line, and the spring. Take the two ends of the nylon line and again put it through the whole of the web shooter body. You see it comes out the other side and just pull straight through. That is the principal operation of how this whole thing works. And finally, the last Part for this bottom assembly is you take your scrimp, take your tiny screwdriver, unscrew the scrimp slightly, just enough to let the two ends of the nylon line pass through. The length you pull it will be customized to every person depending on how big your hand is. So once you've found the perfect length, take your small screwdriver, again, screw that screw in if you can find it. It's a little small and it shouldn't uh, slip or anything like that. And there you have your finished bottom assembly. On to the web shooter body. So the first part you're gonna wanna do is take all these green LEDs and snip their LEDs, wires. Not quite sure what to call these, but we'll just call them LEDs. Snip them, doesn't have to be an exact science. Just try and leave, just try and leave a little bit of wire because we're gonna be bending this later. Now with each of these LEDs, we're gonna be placing them in these slots in the web shooter body. What you want to test first is the orientation of it. So when it lights up, then that means we want the wire that's currently touching the side of the battery on the outside of the web shooter. So you see the wire on the right side right now, so in the lit up. So we want that on the outside of the web shooter. And to put it in, you just slot it in through the top, find a flat surface, flat surface and just, yeah, push it in the slot. Have your five LEDs in there and what you want to do is press it against a flat surface just make sure all the LEDs are aligned so once on that flat surface we can commence the next part which is the bending okay let's bend these LEDs so we're gonna to want to bend the bottom ones all to the left as so and for the top uh, we can do like a I don't know anyone anywhere else any other way to explain this, but basically just like a like a mountain. All right, so once you got this basic kind of structure, you can flip your soldering iron on, wait for it to heat up. But yeah, and in preparation for this next part, you're gonna want to prepare the magnetic reed switch. See, this thing is pretty cool actually. It's actually what turns on and off the LEDs. So we're gonna be attaching this in circuit with the battery. And effectively what it does when it senses, when it's in the presence of a strong enough magnetic field, there are two conductive plates of some kind. Actually, I'm not completely sure. But let's say they're conductive plates of some kind. And when they're in the presence of a magnetic field, they attract and eventually if the magnetic field is strong enough, they touch. And when they touch, that allows the electricity to flow through. So basically, the way this web shooter turns on and off its LEDs is when it senses a strong enough magnetic field. And that magnetic field is provided by the projectile. So once the projectile is actually inserted into the web shooter body, the um, magnetic reed switch detects it and turns on the LEDs. And when it leaves the web shooter, then the LEDs turn off. All right, the soldering iron should be hot enough now. So basically we want to form a connection among these five and these five. We'll start with the bottom. So 
countering the magnetic research. Honestly, this is the hardest part of the entire build, so if you can get through this, you can do anything. Okay, that's pretty perfect. Take one of the pieces of the LEDs that we cut off, put aside earlier, and uh, grip it with the pliers. And basically what you're going to want to do is take the solder, you're going to be attaching this to the other side, the other five LEDs. There you go. Soldering done. Our main priority here is not breaking the magnetic reed switch. These things are incredibly fragile and surprisingly expensive. It's like two bucks for one. So you really do not want to break it. All right, that's pretty good. Basically what you do is just battery here and you're golden. There you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So that part's done. Now all that's left to do is to put in the hex nuts, these four sides, and then screw in the bottom and we're almost done with the main web shooting unit. Apologies if I'm whispering so much, it's just I feel weird talking at normal level when the camera is, or my phone is right next to my face. I feel like in post production it'll sound like I'm shouting. But now it's just turning out like an ASMR video, so. Alright, so the four hex nuts are in. All we have to do now is join the top and bottom halves. Cool. So slot in the CR2032 battery and put that, match it up with a slot on the web shooter bottom. Now, what I have to do is slot in the bingo chip. This one's really just a friction fit, so not much to it. See the little cavity, and Press it in, this should be a click. Pretty straightforward. I'm using Loctite 420. <laughs> Laughing for no particular reason there. And let's get started. some gears on there. So the final point of order is to slot the strap through. Here you can see there's just a small rectangle hole. Put the strap through. Pull it through. And back. And there you go. Web shooter main unit finished. If you made it this far, congrats. Um, this is the hardest part, so everything else will be pretty quick, pretty easy and breezy. Let's get to it. The next part we're making is the projectile. You will need all the magnets, spring, big spring, the magnet attached, and the projectile part itself. Now I use Aerodite, but any brand should do. On this two-part epoxy. Do not want to get this stuff hands. Very annoying, very hard to take off, and possibly cause cancer. This stuff is not to be trifled with. Please don't uh, do anything rash when using epoxy. It's really not good for you. Uh, yeah. Here's my safety briefing. Alright, let's get to it. And now we got a fast game to do this because this is epoxy that sets in a cool five minutes. So take the four by six, dip it in the epoxy, just got some on the glove, very good. Just stuff it in there. Dip it in epoxy, 
slot it through. So the projectile epoxies are done, but we have one more to do. You need to make sure it's the first, the correct orientation first. So have it attract, and whatever side attracts, that's the side we don't want, put it inside the magnet attach. So flip it to the other side, do the same, dip it epoxy. So while we let those dry, we can take this part of the magnet projectile and slot in the large spring. Once it's in, just take your super glue again, just super glue the top ledge. Now there is your complete projectile. All you, to, all you have to do is wait for it to dry, and you are good. The last part of this build is the making the web string itself. So take your web string, whichever um, one you decide to use. Pull it out to your desired length, be any length. Shorter is easier to reload, but also shorter. <laughs> Take your scissors out, cut there, and yeah. So on one end, you're going to want to tie it to this stop ball. You see, all this part, all this part does is it stops the end of the web string from leaving the web shooter, unless you Pull on the nylon line, pull it through, and there. What you do now is just, you double knot or triple knot it. There you go. So this end of the web string is done. So all that's left now to do is take the other end of your web string, put it through this hole and the magnet attach. Pull it through and then the same drill, triple knot it. Awesome. So once you made your three, pull it and make sure it's a good connection. Snippity snip snip. And the web string is officially done. So now, all parts of your web shooter are actually finished. Congratulations. All that's left now to do is load up the web string itself. How you do that is, you take your load stick, you take your cover, you slot it in should fit just nice. Then you take your end with a magnet, you attach inside this little crevice, and wrap it around. There, so now you got that. Stick the stop ball in first, and you have this side. Position it again in the crevice, and then just push there. And then you can slowly pull it out. And there's your web cartridge. You have your main web shooter unit. You have your cartridge as loaded with a web string, ready to burst. Very cool. <laughs> your magnetic projectile and your load stick. So this is what you should be left with. And this is the completed finished product. Congratulations. So moment of truth, put that in there, pull the nylon first, load it in, and there you have it. If you want, just point at it where you want, and then fire. Congratulations. All right, thanks for following and watching this tutorial, guys. Really appreciate it means a lot and um, again all the links for the files and all the parts components 3d print files whatever you need will be in the description so check that out if you want yeah and thanks for watching see you again